Hello, Mr. Barton here, and in this video I seek to answer the question, how do I assess baseline knowledge? Now, in a previous video, when I looked at the different times you may ask a diagnostic question, this was number one, and it's the most obvious, at the start of a lesson to assess baseline knowledge. But it's so important that I just wanted to dedicate a short video to it. Because there's two main kind of ways you may assess baseline knowledge, and they both have their potential pitfalls. So the first is, you may want to ask some diagnostic questions based on the skill you're about to teach that lesson. So for example, you may be teaching your class adding fractions, and you may start the lesson by seeing where they're at with adding fractions. Maybe it's like a year nine group and you know they've, they've seen it before. So you ask them a question, you put an, an adding fractions question on the board. Now, the, the, the kind of ideal scenario with this is the kids get it wrong, you then teach a wonderful lesson, and then you assess them at the end of the lesson and they get it right, perfect. So you've assessed the baseline knowledge, the baseline knowledge is pretty low, you then work with them, sort out the knowledge, ask it again, and they've, they've sorted, everyone's happy. That's fine, but if kids get that question right at the start of the lesson, you're in a bit of trouble because you cannot proceed with the rest of the lesson as you'd planned it because kids have already demonstrated that they've got the baseline knowledge that you're trying to impart on them for the rest of the lesson. So if you're going to ask a question at the start of a lesson, you've got to be ready to react to it. I've sat through too many lessons where it's a beautifully planned lesson, but teachers ask a question at the start, and it's very obvious that either all the kids or a decent amount of kids actually know the skills that the rest of the lesson's all about. So if you're gonna ask a question, you've gotta be ready to deal with it. That's the first point. The second point makes me look bad, but I'm gonna just share a bit of a horror story from my past with you. And that is, as a general rule, what I like to do in my teaching now, but I didn't used to do this, was anytime I was teaching new knowledge, so a new skill or a new concept, I will ask three diagnostic questions that assess baseline skills students need to be secure in in order to access that new knowledge that I'm trying to teach them. All right. So. Let me tell you a quick story about what I mean by that. So once upon a time, I was teaching my year 11s vectors. Now, those of you who've heard me speak over the last few years will have, have heard me talk about my year 11 class. It was a class I had two years ago, and I inherited them at the start of year 11 for numerous reasons. They'd had a really rough ride um, coming up the school, um, a really bad maths journey. So I picked them up in, in September, and the confidence was flipping rock bottom. They didn't like maths, and they were scared to make mistakes, and all, all the kind of, all the stuff for nightmares and they were lovely kids as well so I thought right this is my project I'm going to sort these kids out we're going to get through this together so <laughs> we'd struggled with a load of topics like fractions and decimals and and basic algebra and all that so we've muddled our way through those and I kept saying to them look in a few weeks, we're gonna do vectors. Vectors is brand new to you, so you've got no negative preconceptions about it. You've had no bad experiences with vectors. We're gonna do this all fresh for the first time. You're gonna nail it, we're gonna be back on track. So everyone was happy. So I taught them the lessons and I planned them really carefully and everything was going really well and I was dead happy with it. The kids were buzzing, Every, everyone was flying. So it got to the end of the series of lessons on vectors. And I thought a good way to round it off would be to give them a classic vectors exam question. So I picked out this one, the back of an exam, a back of an Edexcel non-calculator paper. We've seen these all before. Part A, express A, B in terms of A and B. Um, so I gave them this question and I said, right, you've got five minutes. Let's see how you get on. So they're all working away. Part A, phew, flew through it, fine. At the end of the five minutes, by the way, um, I should say I went through the answers. So during these five minutes that the kids are working, I could see them whizzing through part A, everyone's happy. And then they started part B and I could see there was a bit of murmuring going on. Things weren't quite right, but I thought, oh, it'll be fine. They're just the low confidence, all that kind of stuff. So the five minutes was up. I said, right, I'm gonna project the answers up. I want you to mark it. And then I want you to tell me how you've got them. So I put up part A, everyone's got it right. Everyone's dead happy. Put up part B, out of the entire class, two kids have got it right. The rest of them, Edward in the hands, depressed. And I'm just, I was gobsmacked. I thought they were winding me up because I couldn't see how this, this had gone wrong. So in the kids' heads there, they'd failed again. They'd screwed up vectors. They thought they got it, but then they didn't. Now, it was only when I then started picking through the answers, through talking to kids and looking at the work, that I discovered it wasn't the fact that they couldn't do vectors. Not at all. Their knowledge of vectors was superb. 
It was the fact that this question required them to demonstrate another skill at the end, a skill that I hadn't assessed. It was a skill that involved adding fractions, negative fractions, to whole numbers. And you've all seen those. The question ends and you end up with like minus two fifths of A and all that. You've got to add on two A's and things like that. That's a separate skill. And it was that that was letting the kids down. Now, if I could go back in time, what I would have done and what I flipping should have done was I should have asked this question at the start of the lesson. And then when it became blindingly obvious that the kids couldn't do this, I then should have spent 10 or 15 minutes dealing with this skill separate from vectors. And then once that was sorted, then they would have been able to access part B. Now, what I then had to do, because I did it the other way around, was then say, all right, forget it. No, it's not that you're bad at vectors. It's just we need to sort this problem out. But by which stage, in the kids' heads, were crap at vectors. So the damage had already been done. So the lesson I took from this is, as I said, whenever I'm teaching a new topic, I always try and think of what are three fundamental skills students need to have to be able to access that new topic. And I assess those at the start of the lesson. And if those skills aren't in place, there is no point teaching the new stuff. Let me show you one more example. <laughs> Once again, it's me year 11. You think I would have learnt, right? Now, this one wasn't quite as bad, but it's still pretty bad. Histograms were coming up. It must have been like a month later. And I said, right, remember what happened with vectors? There's no chance this is happening again with histograms. We're going to nail histograms. So sure enough, taught them histograms. Same thing again. Let's do an exam question on it. So classic exam question on histograms. So kids working away on it. Everyone happy, blah, blah, blah. Projected the answer up. Everyone got it right apart from three kids. Now, whenever I looked at those kids' answers, it wasn't that they couldn't do histograms. What had they messed up? They messed up plotting the flipping scale on the frequency density on the y-axis. They got that bit wrong. But of course, in the kids' heads, those three kids, well, we can't do histograms. We're rubbish at histograms. We failed again. If I instead had asked them a simple question like this, the chances are everyone else in the class would have whizzed it. Those three kids did a struggle with it, but we'd have sorted it out in two or three minutes. They'd have then been thinking, oh, I've got to be careful. Yeah, I've got to remember me scales, all that kind of stuff. They would then have nailed that question and their confidence would have been high. So... After all that, it feels good to kind of exercise my demons there. After all that, the bottom line is, if you are asking diagnostic questions at the start of the lesson, firstly, you've got to be ready to react to the kids' answers. If they've got it right, you cannot carry on with the rest of the lesson as you planned it. And if they get it wrong, you probably can't carry on with the rest of the lesson as you've planned it, depending on where you'll want the lesson to go. And secondly, if you're teaching new knowledge, as a golden rule, think what are three baseline skills kids need to be secure on to um, access the new knowledge that you want to teach them and ask those at the start of the lesson separate to the topic itself. Whew. Let's take a breather after that. Hope that was useful. Bye for now.